are telling us that they have received or will expect to receive a 5 to 10 per cent well, salary increase. That's going in to give, the, uh, that's, that's gonna give Governor Stevens those proverbial heebie jeebies at night when he settles down after his hot milk. He's going to be not sleeping at all well, is he? <laughs> I think really that I think what's happening is what we're seeing is that Australian employers are now meeting the expectations of Australian employees. You know, we have had a, a two-year period of restraint, uh, and I think really what we're seeing now is the market really moving and employers really moving to meet the expectations, uh, you know, of the employees. All right. Listen, uh, Jason Cartwright from the recruitment firm Randstad, we are going to have to thank you at this point for your contribution. Uh, we will potentially return to you, but I want to just take viewers down to the dealing room at CMC Market Stockbroking. David Taylor is standing by there. And David, you know, the markets had been treading water, indeed had been underwater, and there's been a tick up and an appreciable one when it comes to the A dollar. Certainly. Good morning to you. The Aussie dollar had a rocket put under it um, about uh, five minutes, uh, ten minutes ago. Basically speaking, uh, the jobs numbers has done uh, quite a, a has given the Aussie dollar quite a bit of a boost, simply on the back of the fact that it shows that our economy is relatively buoyant compared to the other developed nations, and of course, probably raises the chances of a rate rise coming up uh, in November. So obviously, rates on hold in October, but. If the uh, balance of uh, you know uh, balance has shifted at all, it's shifted to the upside for a November rate rise. And the things uh, that are supporting the Australian dollar are really starting to move into line now. Higher commodity prices, higher gold, obviously that interest rate differential between us and the United States looking to widen, and of course uh, people looking to invest in Australia and Australian companies. Well, given but is that but is that spike is that spike saying that money markets have now convinced themselves that November? is a no choice position for the reserve bank that this that this effectively they have to be ahead of the curve they know that that print implies the whole slew of inflationary pressures are live well, remember what we said a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, that in terms of the way that price pressures were moving in the economy, but there was less focus on the housing market and more focus on the terms of trade and labour costs. So if the Reserve Bank's looking at anything uh, that will be driving prices up, one of those factors will be labour costs, and at the moment it looks like there will be a squeeze. And uh, given the fact that we saw a drop-off in uh, part-time employment and a pick-up in full-time employment, there's no doubt that uh, the Australian employment market is going to pick up uh, I imagine job ads will probably pick up from here as well and we're going to see a significant upwards pressure on wages and that will contribute to inflation. Now, the Reserve Bank is of course worried about the international macroeconomic environment and that really hasn't changed too much in the last, uh, I guess, few months really. We haven't had any, any major problems out of left field. And I imagine, if anything, uh, the risks to inflation rising above what the Reserve Bank is comfortable with today mm. look a little bit stronger. Does this, in a sense, vindicate doing nothing in October or does it suggest maybe in hindsight uh, they could have gone and they could have just been even further ahead of things? Well, again, I'm not an economist, but I'm happy to comment mm. on where I think the Reserve Bank is going and how the markets are responding yeah. to that, certainly. And at this point, I was perfectly happy to see the Reserve Bank uh, sit on the sidelines for October. In my view, Australia is very exposed to the international environment, and all we need is a, uh, a left-field, um, you know, uh, exogenous shock coming from um, international, uh, the mm. international environment, whether it be through sovereign debt issues in Europe, whether it be through a slowdown in China, or some sort of uh, emerging asset bubble bursting or the United States. There's plenty of things that could go terribly wrong and our market would really suffer on the back of that. We wouldn't want to see the Reserve Bank have to ratchet back rates in, in a quick way because that would be very uh, difficult for our economy to handle. So certainly the international macroeconomic, macroeconomic environment is risky in my view, to be holding back until there is certainly uh, more pressure applied to inflation because we're really only getting pressure applied at the moment through that international sector. The rest of the economy is still trying to motor along. So if there is uh, that pressure coming through from wages, which we probably can uh, read into from these figures, yeah. then yes, November would be a, a good time to raise rates. Remember, it was February next mm. year that we were looking at originally. It's very interesting how the market uh, in, in, in releases gone by has uh, anticipated the outperformance of this series. It's priced it in, but from the numbers we we see the turnaround on the 200 and indeed the A dollar spike. It looks as if it did catch a lot of people off guard. David, appreciate it. My pleasure. David Taylor there from CMC Markets Stock Broking. Let's return to my panel to the minute. Of course, I've got with me uh, Simon Bolton from Aqualis Consulting and uh, no less from Melbourne, Jason Cartwright from the recruitment firm Randstad. And Jason, if you can just come back into play now on this one. Uh, uh, 
proponent, uh, another piece of this jigsaw must surely be the state-by-state -state breakdown. Are you hearing anything yet about uh, the spread of jobs in these latest set of numbers? Yeah, interesting. I think what we're seeing is a reasonably consistent demand across all states. Um, obviously, there is a, a higher peak of demand in the West. Interestingly, Queensland um, came back online the last few months with some much stronger job creation numbers and much stronger um, employer demand, which was an uptick for them from the start of the year, where, as we know, Queensland was a little bit slower. Um, again, New South Wales, I think, with you know the banking and financial services sector uh, creating uh, far more jobs than uh, the other industry sectors has seen an uptick in, in New South Wales and, and you know the Victorian and South Australian job figures were, were consistently strong as well. So. All right, uh, Jason Cartwright, we are going to now have to lose you. Thank you so much for your contribution. Simon Bolden, don't uh, Thanks, go Martin. anywhere because we're going to get your final thoughts. Last word, but Rob Henderson from the NAB is joining us uh, now. Rob, uh, that a dollar spike, uh, what, is, what are you seeing from that? Well, it's interesting, Carson, not only is the A dollar spike, but the three-year bond futures are back at the levels they were on the morning of the RBA board meeting. So the big sell-off we saw it after the RBA didn't increase interest rates completely turned around now. So the market's back to looking for near-term increases in interest rates from the RBA. And obviously this is a very, very strong number and it does increase the chances of an interest rate hike in Australia. Lots of talk of quantitative easing overnight, Carson. So the outcome here, of course, is positive for the currency, and that's what we've seen this morning. Quite a spectacular jump there on the announcement in the currency, smashing through that 98 cents level and just keeping going. Um, underlying the momentum, uh, you suggested that everything is locked in. Are all the stars aligned, or do you see uh, some kind of, well, some pain on the horizon? In terms of the currency, Carson? Well, no, just in terms of the underlying trends that these numbers are telling us oh, about look, the economy. Uh, actually, I think the RBA will be very, very happy with these numbers. Mm. I guess the only thing that will concern them is that jobs growth is a bit too fast. It's running at practically 50,000, mm. 56,000 increase in full-time jobs. Now, at the moment, the situation is OK because it, the strength of the labour market is mm. actually encouraging a lot of people mm. to come back into the market. So that's, of course, keeping the unemployment rate from falling in any further and leading to strong wages growth but at some point we're going to see a topping out of the the amount of people coming back into the market yeah. and unemployment can fall fast from there Carson so mm. you know right now okay but I think the demand mm. for labour being so strong will be a bit of a concern and it just highlights why we have to take some of the heat out of the domestic economy. Is it fair to say as Justin Smirk from St George just has told Reuters that in this is one a strong uh, justification for the reserve to hike, but it's not everything that if money markets are scurrying to clamber onto that, they should really wait for CPI, because that still has to endorse today's numbers. Look, I'm not sure about the CPI. I don't think the situation where the CPI at the moment is the issue, Carson. Mm. Um, the issue is where the CPI will be in one or two years' time. And if we get this sort of labour market growth continuing ahead, we'll see a CPI well above 3%, and I'm referring to the underlying CPI there. Mm. Um, that's a real worry for the Reserve Bank. So I don't think the CPI particularly is an important piece of information. Now, obviously, if it turns out <coughs> higher than the median forecast, which is around three quarters of a percent, then that is going to be a real problem for the RBA because it means that the downturn in inflation is already finished. But we don't think it will be a high one and there's no evidence to suggest it will. So, right. you know, I Thank still you. reckon we need to think about um, not inflation right now. Rob Henderson for the NAB, value your instant analysis. Many thanks. That's a pleasure. And a final thought, and it's got to be ready in one sentence, Simon Bolden from Aqualis Consulting. Uh, how do you read it? What's your advice to job applicants from here on in? Look, Carson, I think it's been a, a complete shift. You know, 12 months ago we had uh, no jobs with too many people applying for mm. them. We now have too many jobs and a growing number of jobs and less people being available to take them. Right. That is going to create competition, which in turn will create wages rises, which is where I think that inflationary right. scaremongering can come from. Simon Bolden from Aquila, so well put. Thanks for your contribution and to all the rest of the panel that on the day that uh, those numbers beat the street, the dollar spiked and the markets turned positive. Stick with us. Continuing coverage through this afternoon.